The following is a clip from my guest appearance on the Hit Me One More Time podcast with David and Nick. Hit Me One More Time is a nostalgia reflection show that looks at the things we loved as kids to see if they still hold up today. For my episode, we talked about the 1989 film The Wizard, starring Fred Savage. Now, prior to viewing it for the podcast appearance, I actually hadn't seen the movie since, I think, 1989. It was the film that actually launched the sneak peek at Super Mario Bros. 3, so of course I begged and begged to see this film. Wait a second. I think I just realized. This movie is like an hour and a half commercial for Nintendo. Oh. Well, I hope you enjoy the clip. I've got to process a few things about my childhood. The movie it wanted a specific plot. It wanted Rain Man. It wanted Road Trip. It wanted it to be about a, 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 a three kids ranging from like I don't know eight to twelve going and just it's super unrealistic. We we get that it's silly. I will say though that I did find it charming. Did anyone else find like did did you find it charming, Joe? Yeah, and I mean you hit on something else too, which was that that was a kind of trope in eighties movies too. If you think about it, in other words, the so like the Goonies. Right. And you have movies like The Gate, where you have incredibly young people who go on adventures or, or mm-hmm. save the world. Right. And they don't need any kind of particular skills usually to do so, like anything, you know, magical or anything like that. They just need courage. Right. I mean, they, they walk out and they're able to do this. It's interesting to me that as we moved into the 90s, just like a year later and then into the 2000s, it was like young people started to need to train to do things like so harry potter is special but he's he's not good he's got to train you know you mentioned uh i think in the pre-conversation like pokemon or here and ash is you know excited but he's not good he's got to train to do this but in the 80s it was like you just needed courage and so for me i think having that 80s background it was just kind of like oh yeah i remember this kids going out you know, taking care of murderers and robbers. <laughs> like it was no big deal, you know, that kind of thing. I hadn't even thought about it that way, really. It was just kind of like common to me. I was like, oh, okay. Huh. Yeah. No, That's a really th- interesting point. Th- I, I could feel how 80s this movie was um, <laughs> while watching it. Like, uh, um, obviously, you know, we talked about Rain Man coming to mind with this just because, I mean, it rips off a lot of Rain Man. Um, to the point where they're in casinos. I, also, that weird child arcade casino that had a, a young lady walking around with like bubble gum and and you know lollipops. Like she's like the you know someone walking around with drinks on a regular vape. I'm like, who is watching this child or pay? Is she getting paid? I have a lot right. of questions. Um, but also, I just recently a movie this reminded me of a lot was over the top which i yeah. watched recently for i don't wait i don't need to get into that on this podcast um it was of my own free will before anybody starts getting concerned but also has like similar beats of like g- taking like challenging people in diners uh mm-hmm. to to do something and like it's leading to this big competition that has like a lot of money and all this like prestige within this world like attached to it and and it was just such an 80s vibe of you're right uh like jimmy is is great at video games but the like fred savage and and Haley, like they're just and jimmy they're just getting by because like they're just plucky kids and you know the kindness of strangers i guess which it feels like the 80s was very much a time of stranger danger and uh this yes. movie's like no 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 don't worry about it just get in the truck so I just want to say it's funny that you mentioned over the top, which I, I haven't seen, but in the on the production notes on Wikipedia, the truck that Spanky drives was used in 
over the top. Yes. So there's actual connection between the two films. Uh, also, apparently, it was used in Messenger of Death uh, and Tank Girl. Oh, it's a, it was mm. a, it's a movie star so this truck. truck got around. Yeah, this truck was famous. Good for them for getting the famous truck. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't so, have known. I love that movie. I'm unashamed in my enjoyment of Over the Top. I love it. it. it over, it's so I, bad. It's wonderful. Over the Top, like, all the dialogue is written <laughs> for Sylvester Stallone and a woman, but they put his uh, young man as his son in there. And there's several points where somebody should call the cops. Like when the kid jumps out of a moving truck and starts running down the road and Stallone just grabs him and everybody's like, nah, whatever. <laughs> Crazy yeah. kid. I'm We're going to have to do a this. deep dive into trucker morals. I, at I a certain guess. Point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, this movie. Is this happening out there right now? Too? <laughs> the truckers, the truckers code. Right. I will say over the top has an over the top and amazing uh movie poster though. And yeah. soundtrack. It's the the movie and is soundtrack. insane. The movie is ridiculous. I'm, I'm gonna or, or Joe, if you come back, maybe maybe bring over the top. I mean oh, pretend, that you, pretend you don't have like a, a, a history with it. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe we can just yeah, we'll, we'll maybe we'll make an exception at some point and just do we'll, we'll just watch. We just want to watch it and talk about it. So we'll stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned. we'll figure that out. Uh, boy, we, we've gotten off of the, the wizard. What are we talking? The, the, the <laughs> uh, wizard. We're talking about the power glove. It's so good. It's bad. Or I, I love the power glove. It's so bad. Oh, I love the power glove. It's so bad. I also oh. love Lucas. His name was Lucas, right? Yep, Lucas. The, his his Lucas. outfit. I don't remember in the Power Glove scene, but definitely in the the climax. You know, he he looks like David from um, Schitt's Creek <laughs> a little <laughs> bit. Which is sort of the clothes. I'm like, I, that didn't even seem like '80s fashion. I, I'm not an expert in '80s fashion, but it just seemed like they just put some really big text on a piece of fabric and then accidentally turned it into a T-shirt. Yeah, he was like 80s, 80s rad, <laughs> rad, a rad bad boy. I guess it would be an 80s lingo, oh. a rad bad boy. Lucas was Lucas was such a rad dude, man. I mean, yeah. he <laughs> he's walking around with his his NES games. He's like, I got 97 of them. Pick any game you want. I'm good at all of them. I have 97 of them. The, no, the, go ahead, like the, the, his power glove is in a case. That someone carries for, oh, I mean, it's I, art, but it also sucks. It's, it's interesting. This movie, you know, I, I, I thought esports was a relatively new thing, like within the last decade, you know, but in this case, like that was based, that was esports, like in 1989, oh, yeah. they were promoting it. And so I feel like in some cases in this movie, like it was, it actually treated video games as like a, a fairly like genuine skill or hobby or whatever. Like the, the dad, the, the, the dad played by Bo Bridges, you know, I think he, maybe, I maybe he makes a comment at one point, but then he gets obsessed with playing yeah. the video games. Like even the, the, even like the snooty to do parents, you know, like they show up at the thing and they're like cheering and like the two dads are like hugging each other. Like they just get into it. It's not like, oh my God, like I didn't grow up with video games. This is rotting kids brain and Mario is turning people to prostitution or something like it's not. It wasn't any of that. Like it was just played straight. But, but this. It, yes. Yes. I'm with you. Um, but you mentioned like the dad getting hooked on games and Christian Slater, who we have not mentioned yet, is in this film. Uh, the movie also forgets he's in the movie for a while, so you know that's yeah. fine. Uh, but just God, the the blatant, just blatant Nintendo uh, promotion is, is just like like Christian Slater when they're at uh, when they're like asking around about the kid, he just plugs in this NES into a TV and starts playing it and is like talking to his dad, and then like they're at a hotel and he plugs in the NES and like starts playing it. And it's like, come, what, like, what, like, why, why does he just carry? I guess he's like, it was, it was his old one. And it was just in the truck, but s still, you're just gonna, 
plop down. Why do you have an old N- Nintendo TV? system in in the back of your truck too? Yeah, like with a fern, because they were like, like presum- planted fern. With a fern, <laughs> they were like you know, so, they were like, oh god, the someone in the audience might question where he got this from. Let's write a line in here to make sure <laughs> no one figures it out. Yeah. yeah, and I got to use the power glove exactly one time, one time, oh. and it was horrific. It's, but I will yeah. say, I turned, I put it on. And for that brief second before I actually used it, I was like, wow, this might be really cool. And it wasn't at all. It's not even cool in the movie. It's so lame in the movie. Well, well, I mean, to be fair, like we've got like three decades of of history now, you know, and experience and changes in technology that the power glove seems stupid. But I mean... I don't know. I think if I if I was a kid in 1989, I I would have thought the power glove, uh, like much like Joe sort of just stated, like I think that would have been cool. The commercials principle. were the commercials yeah. were kind of cool. Plus, you had in the background, you also had a a guy by the name of Michael Jackson who also walked around with a single glove, oh, and there was an element mm. of that, a connection of that culture as well, because Jackson was also really into video games, also. And so when you saw that, it wouldn't have looked quite as awkward as it would today to just mm. have a single gloved item. Mm-hmm. Somehow there, there's like a connection there that it wouldn't have been. It wasn't as bad. I hope you enjoyed that clip. You can check the episode notes below for some links to the Hit Me One More Time podcast, as well as to the episode itself in which I'm guest appearing. As always, keep one foot firmly planted on the neutral ground and have a fantastic day.